where he was. She couldn't think of anything else. Like she didn't think about 80 miles. She's just like, I gotta tell, I gotta tell Elizabeth, I gotta tell her what happened. If you're writing notes, you might write this down though. There's something that steals your joy quicker than anything else, and that's jealousy. You cannot, well, no, you can, but you should not be jealous of someone else in ministry. God made you to be you. He didn't make you to be them. He made you to be you. And he made you to be joyful in being you. And when they get to do something, be glad. Because God has called them to do that. Jealousy will steal it. Now look at Mary. Mary could have been jealous of, of Elizabeth, who suddenly is at the highest level in the social strata. And she's the mother of God. Mary's the mother of God. And yet Elizabeth's getting all the attention. She's Sarah. She's like Sarah. But she wasn't. She humbly went to take care of her relative Elizabeth for three months at the end of her pregnancy. Elizabeth could have also been like, what? I now have this wonderful grace, this wonderful gift, and then you show up. You could have showed up 20 years ago. Well, no, you wouldn't have even been born yet, but you know what I mean. Anybody could have shown up earlier, later. Not right now. You're just a kid. I'm a matriarch, which was a big deal in Hebrew culture. No jealousy in St. Monica either. Let's look at this mother. She took in her son's mistress. She cared for her. She met her son's pride and arrogance with relentless prayer. She patiently endured her husband's harsh words, sometimes his brutal insults, his affairs. He was unfaithful. Once strengthened by hope, she persisted in joyful expectation. Be a joyful person and share that joy. Be ready for whatever God calls you to do. Mary was ready. Now, I want you to ask yourself right now, what does God want me to do? Because this is, and this is one of the things that I see often with Catholics, not with my students. My students, sophomore students, seniors, I teach apologetics to seniors, but they're trying to figure out what their vocation is. They really do want to know what their vocation is, and they want to answer yes to it. And sometimes they figure out early on what it is, which is marvelous. Um, and sometimes they figure it out a little bit later, a few years out of high school, and that's fine too. But then it's almost like, check, I know my vocation, and it is. It's, that is it. You figured it out. But they stop being open and ready to find out what God wants them to do or where he wants them to go. Well, I already know I'm a mother. I already know I'm a sister. I already know I'm a priest. Doesn't mean God stops talking to you and stop, stops leading you places. If you look at the lives of saints, they would do something, and they would do it intensely. And God would call them out of their comfort zone, and they were ready for it, and they would go somewhere else, and they would do the same thing there. And other graces would come forward. If you haven't heard God sending you, start asking him, what do you want me to do? Because if it's to stay where I am doing what I'm doing, that's great. But if it is to go somewhere else and I'm just not listening, I need to know it. What's next for you? What's on the horizon? What does St. Monica do? She's like, I don't know what to do with the sun. I've tried everything. I've tried crying. I've tried praying. I don't know what to do. God, you want me to talk to St. Ambrose? Okay, that's what I'll do next. So she goes and she does it. What are you supposed to do next? She kept doing it because of that. Her, her husband came to God one year before he died. Because of it, St. Augustine was converted. Because of it, I stand here today. Because of it, we're here praying a novena to St. Monica. We've kind of already talked about humility. Don't be so put together 
that you can't talk to someone who's really not put together. You already know that St. Monica practiced this gift. It gave her strength to serve a ruthless husband, to serve and have respect for a haughty mother-in-law, to take care of and serve a son's concubine, and to love and intercede and pray into the church a very proud son. Humility. You know what? There's no room for pride in this. Next thing is, an evangelist needs to have a spirit of adventure. You are being called to go out and Christify the world. Yikes. That takes a spirit of adventure. There's this great mountain. If you're on the Sea of Galilee, you can see it. It's called Mount Arbel. And I've been fascinated with it every time I've been to Israel, to the Holy Land, for five times. And the first three times, I would go on the Sea of Galilee on a boat, and I would see Mount Arbel. And the first time, I was like, what's the name of that mountain? What's the name of that mountain? I was just so attracted to this mountain. And um, the fourth time I went, I'm like, I, I want to climb it. So I emailed, um, I have a lot of contacts, and I emailed this guy who does, like, not just Catholic pilgrimages, but, like, walking pilgrimage, like, there's the Jesus path, so he did, so I want to climb Mount Arbel, but I'm not in shape, so he told me, well, just do this trail, don't do the, the other trail, the other trail's hard, so on the fourth and fifth time I went, but the fourth time especially, um, I was like, okay, and I'm going to try to stick to this trail, but I just took a wrong turn. And after two hours, two and a half hours, I ended up staring at the cliff. And it was the only way back to the car, unless I decided to go backwards two and a half hours. And my legs were all shaky like they get when you've done too much. I'm like, mm, I don't have two and a half hours in me, but I can't climb that mountain. I can't. I don't. I'll die. I will die. I will fall off and die right here in the Valley of Galilee. But what a way to go, right? Um, spirit of adventure is sometimes like that. You take a deep breath and you're like, you know what? I bet Jesus walked here. That's the view he would have had. When they talked about Jesus going to high places in Galilee, it was either Mount Tabor or it was Mount Arbel. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die here. But at least I'm going to die trying. And I stood there and I watched little children climb this mountain. Yeah. I saw little kids, their parents are like, okay, come on, let's go. I'm like, yeah, but they weigh like 42 pounds. You know, it's like, how hard can it be to be a little monkey? up? But I did it. And that teaches me, not that you have to go and climb mountains, but that teaches us to have a spirit of adventure. You're going to come to times, can you still hear me? Where's this going? You're going to have times where you're looking at the mountain and you're like, I cannot do that. I want you, before you say, I cannot do that, I want you to watch who's doing it. Saints did it. Some of them were really young saints too. Okay, let's give this a whirl. What a way to go, right? You go trying like that. Have a spirit of adventure. Our tummies are telling us it is time for a break. Now, before Father comes and prays for our lunch, I want you to think about this. How I haven't even really needed a firm stopping place with each talk, right? Because that's what this is like. Conversion feeds. We don't even know when it's really happening. Conversion feeds just naturally in the spiritual life into sharing the faith. And it's going to do this also again with going into our personal sanctification. It will kind of blur. There aren't really distinct stopping points and starting points. It will all kind of be like this. So we are at the end of evangelization, but we are not at the end of evangelization. When we come back after lunch, for a short talk after lunch, we're going to 
have some evangelization talk, how you can still continue to share your faith, but we're also going to talk about how very important it is for you to be like St. Paul. Woe to me if I share the faith and run the race, but run it in vain. It's a very real danger. We need to stay faithful.